Now, today's discourse is on the trial of Unamdi Kanu, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. Uh, the trial has caused a lot of controversies, and today I'll be talking with his lawyer, Ifanye Jofo, on the update of how it's going and the controversies that have surrounded it. When we return, Top Talk continues. <music> Mr. Ifanyo Jofo, uh, welcome to Top Talk. Thank you so much, it's a pleasure. All right. Uh, how can you assess the trial so far of your client uh, from the beginning all the way to now? Uh, uh, how, how would you say it has been? Uh, let me correct this impression that is, um, there's no trial in the first place. Mm. Uh, but uh, if you are talking about trial, it appears, appears as if facing trial in the first place. All right. Uh, um, as we had earlier mentioned to the public, not the public, he was um, abducted in Kenya. So sometime, sometime June 26, 2021, and uh, extraordinary rendition to Nigeria. Oh. So the process through which he was abducted and brought to Nigeria is part of issues that are conversing before the court, oh. uh, because the government is not allowed to benefit from their own wrong. Uh, if he has committed an offense done to law, they will have submitted him, submitted him, subjected him to um, necessary, uh, necessary uh, proceedings, what they call them, um, uh, extradition proceedings. Mm. So in Kenya, first of all, determine whether the offense allegedly committed by him fall within the precedent of laws or the offenses that can be tried under that um, uh, proceeding. Proceedings. Mm. So, but they abducted him and brought him here forcibly. So, and these are part of the objections we are raising before the court. So there hasn't been any trial in the first place because mm -hmm. what you are saying that the court cannot proceed on that matter. Mm -hmm. So and also we have uh, other fundamental issues we raise in our objection to the charge filed against him. So they filed an amended seven count charge against him. So and we we'll file uh, an objection to the competence of the charge. So and also jurisdiction of the court to proceed with the hearing. Mm -hmm. And um, when such an objection is filed. Yes. The court can, we first of all, will not take further step. We first of all hear and determine whether the court has a to entertain the charge in the first place. Yeah. So before we talk about trial, so there hasn't been any trial. Yeah. And there are bound to be confusion because the confusion uh, apparent in what has been playing out is the fact that the federal government is running from pillar to pole, yeah. trying to uh, get something to nail them with. But in the end, they came out with what less paper which they file in court. And so, and I would believe so most strongly that if the court uh, hear the application on the merit, uh, I don't think we'll go back to that court again. The court will discharge, I'm sorry, discharge him and acquit him. Mm. Because the seven count charge, another charge filed against him, did not disclose the offense known to law. And those arguments have been conversed in our, in our objection before the court. I don't want, I wouldn't want to go into the substance or otherwise of the of the argument to raise in court because the matter has told you this. Yeah. So that's where we are today. So in in, in that true sense, there's no trial uh, going on now. Uh, so we are still at the prior stage for the court to hear the objection of file and make pronouncements on it one word or the other. Yeah. So never lost take further step. So uh, of course uh, last agenda that was a penultimate time adjournment was on November tenth. Mm. What played out in court is a matter of public knowledge. Mm. So when the court eventually adjourned the matter to January 19th and 20th, even when we are at the court, we are not allowed in. So we went back to the court to <coughs> apply for the court to abridge time within which to hear their, hear their, hear their application substantially. Mm. Uh, so we have got urging the court to hear our objection at the stand now. So, uh, and in view of the enabling laws, uh, mm -hmm. so 396 of the ACJA and also some 6A of the Federal High Court uh, Party Direction of 2010. Also, out of the position that they call that this kind of case must be had one a day to day mm -hmm. as we progress. So there is no basis for court to adjourn it to January. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, portion to that application, the court uh, <coughs> fixes the day for the hearing of the application. And we made an effort to or the court to hear our objection yesterday, which um, the court uh, uh, declined from uh, hearing, insisting that he's not ready to hear the application. That was what, what actually came up yesterday was an application for time abridgment, which the court had and uh, granted. So, and court ran through his diaries, her diaries, and also to confirm to the public and also including the press that the schedule is busy, as such, he cannot be able to hear us 
before January 18. Mm. So he has satisfactorily proven to the world, not only us people who are caught. Yeah, because I believe when press are in court, the world is uh, also listening. Mm. So that um, he has and I is, is occupied to hear the application. But I've proceeded to make them make them uh, far reaching others portion of applications. Uh, so I know that are now before the public domain. All that, that has to do with um, taking him, giving him maximum possible comfort. Mm. And that regards, taking him to take him out of where he's been kept now. And also allowing him to practice the religion. Because since he was brought here to the 29th of uh, June 2021, mm. portion to the ten and portion to the ten portion to order of court. He hasn't been allowed to practice this uh, faith, so religious faith. So the court made other that you're allowed, you know, also providing with Gumbia. Can, can we talk about that? Is that normal? Is, yeah. should, it, should the court have to say you're allowed to do this before <coughs> it happens? Uh, it's on, you see, there is nothing normal associated with the conduct of SSS. Of course, you know, if you don't know, you may not know it now. They are good in flouting court orders. Mm -hmm. This is not the first time we have seen it. Mm -hmm. It happened 2015 when he was arrested. In Lagos, Namikan was arrested in Lagos in, on December, on October 14th, 2016, 2015. Mm -hmm. Brought in here. Then the court met another. They caught this already before the magistrate court here, which was two. That same court granted him bail. Mm -hmm. The court they arrested him before, granted him bail. They refused to allow him to go. They took him to Federal High Court. Federal High Court, a demolager as he then was, mm -hmm. also admitted him to bail unconditionally. They should leave him unconditionally. The, the SSS flouted that order. They didn't lose him. Subsequently, brought uh, filed some spurious and stupid charge against him, which we contest contested in court. And out of that 11 count charge, because of the proceeding, the court struck out seven. Mm. Eventually, a grant admitted into bail. So they have the history of flouting court order. So, but um, the court uh, warned yesterday that mm -hmm. if, in the event, any of these orders she's making, he made yesterday, is flouted by SSL, that we should come back to her. So, regardless of. Um, the court's schedule. I will come back to her and file a bit of, after a bit of facts to demonstrating the violation of the orders in Medellin today. So I believe they will take it serious now. So the court made far reaching orders uh, as to his condition of stay in mm -hmm. SSS, which I believe uh, that order will sustain, uh, will sustain him till uh, future uh, development. So, but I believe they filed the order. I will go back to court. If they filed it today, we will go back to court tomorrow. All right. So, so, okay. so let's talk about the strictness or the behavior of the DSS, as you put it, mm. for this specific case, uh, the case of Nam now. Mm. I, I wonder, I, I don't know what your thought is about this. Do you think this scrutiny and this uh, 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 strictness is due to, other than the fact that Nam is a voice for, you know, is a, he has the, uh, what I call it, the attention of millions of people, other than that, could it also be the fact that uh, he fled the country uh, in 2017, uh, people say that he, he technically didn't um, jump bail because his life was threatened. But do you think he could have done it another way? Do you think that is why the DSS is so concerned about letting him uh, slip away again, so to speak? <coughs> the DSS uh, is merely acting under the script given to them, acting under the directives. So, uh, however, before I proceed, let me correct this impression. Uh, uh, he wasn't, he didn't, Namdi Kanadi at any point in time, John Bell. Right. So the issue of jumping Ben Bell does not arise. All right. Because when he was admitted to Bell, um, that should be on the 17th of April, 2017, yeah. on the conditions given to him, he went home, announced to the people, the followers and the public, that he's coming to court, he was coming to court on October, uh, October 14th, when the matter was scheduled to, to, scheduled to be heard. So, it was 13, 13, 17. Yes. So, and he was getting set. We have taken him on pre-trial pre conference, pre-trial briefing. So, get him set, ready for the trial. Scheduled to commence on October. Yeah. Before he has, his house was invaded on September 14th, a month before the trial. They set for the trial. So, and during this bloody invasion, over 28 persons were killed by security agents, the army, the police, uh, apparently SS was part of them that invaded. They, they may not play a uh, significant uh, and prominent um, role as mm. same, but they were part of them. So, but killed about 28 persons there. So, uh, now, it's only a, a, a non-living object 
that will see some a threat coming to take his life and stay. Mm. So by by out of sheer providence, he narrowly escaped being killed. So now, what quickly comes to mind is a concern. Now, this is a person who is in the country. This is a person who was scheduled to be in court on October 14th to face his trial. And now, assuming without considering to the fact that he committed an offense known to law in the course of enjoying the bail granted him by the court, mm. the flag of men, the secreted dance, are away that is coming back to the court on 14th. A civilized society, an organized society, is said to have rules of law, perspective of law. We have waited for him to come to court. Mm. There's no law that says that if you, in the course of enjoying bail granted you by the, granted the defendant by the, by the court, and you committed an offense in the course of that, that it cannot be charged for those new offenses. You can still be charged. So we are waiting for him to come to court. Then possibly either review the charge, file, I mean the charge file against him, or possibly interrogating leave of court on further offenses committed during the time he was enjoying his bail. Mm -hmm. These are simple things. And it's more so when the federal government had filed an application to revoke his bail, pending before the court, before, before his, the eviction of his house. Mm -hmm. So that shows you simply that they didn't want him alive. So they have a special, they, want, they actually want him dead, not alive, at a point we are discussing. So the treatment being, is he not being punished? I can put it that way. Is that being punished, persecuted as a, as a, as a, a political prisoner? Mm -hmm. So, because if he's being tried on the basis of the amended seven count charge file against him, mm -hmm. I don't think we'll be talking about any trial whatsoever today. Mm -hmm. So, I believe, I wish you a lawyer who have controlled what is filed, mm -hmm. what they file in court in the name of amended charge. That paper is not only worthless, but it's worthless, empty. Never disclosed any offense. Don't do. I'm surprised that they filed such charge against Namdi Kam. Or at some point, I was thinking, I was discussing with my colleagues who are part of this case, like Namike Joffanko. Yeah. I was discussing with them. I told them, assuming, do you know my worry? Yeah. Assuming this guy succeeded in killing this man yeah. in Kenya, where they abducted him, what would have been his fate? So we'll come back here and, and be faced with this kind of watery and spurious and stupid and uh, uh, speculative charge. You're saying, assuming. As we was killed in China. So we'll be talking about this kind of charge. Mm. So we are expecting to see something, either has, or either has committed or failed, or something, at least something commensurate to the kind of uh, uh, punishment was being subjected to at the point he was abducted. Mm. As, 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 let me just put it this way. If somebody committed an offense, mm, an offense of a serious nation, and is being haunted by the establishment or a security agent, yes. the person, the, 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 the void, the force, that will put in place in getting the person arrested will somehow be commensurate to the allegation of offenses allegedly committed, which they are being pursuing for. Mm. Uh, somebody cannot come to my office here and possibly uh, steal my phone, mm? my phone or probably my, my shoe or my beak. Then I'll tell SAS or whatever you call them, what or what or what or whatever, to go after him and get him arrested. Mm -hmm. Of course, in the course of pursuing him, they may kill him. So, and those things, those, it's just a mere uh, out of stealing. Yeah. So, and I'm surprised that they filed this kind of charge against him. So, now, he's not there because he committed an offense unto law. So, you were here expecting something graver? Uh, no, no, I, I was, you, know, they are, you, know, you know, they will be making heavy weather about it. That mm -hmm. Nikan has done this, done that, this, done. And the, uh, we know we never committed a friend. This is a person who, are, who is merely exercising his right as contained in the Constitution. Yeah. Right to self determination is an animal right. It cannot be taken away from the, from, 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 from the citizen. Yeah. So he's advocating for self determination. So it's not, a, it's, not, it's not an offense under our law. It's a, it's a right sanction backed up by law. So, so now, if he's arrested, for committing an offense in relation to that, or probably com he, he committed an he allegedly committed an offense the cost of a standard right. Then I expected, in the manner in which he was abducted, that the offenses allegedly committed would be serious offenses. Hmm. We know he never, he never committed an offense until when he brought him to, brought, we brought him to Nigeria and filed this stupid charge against him. So he's now in custody, yes, custody, not because he committed an offense. He's there because the government wants him to be there. And they have an instruction from the government on the way and manner he is to be treated. 
So this is what we are challenging before the court. That he hasn't been convicted. All right, but he's right. still presumed innocent under our laws. Not and he's title is fully entitled to his full rights as contained under chapter four of the constitution. All right. Let, let's try and connect um, the timeline from when um, like you said, when you are afraid for your life, it makes sense that you should, you know, flee or something. But since then it's been uh, three, four years or so. And in the course of that, um, he has been vocal outside the country, you know, saying uh, different things and all that. If perhaps really um, the government was out to, you know, kill him, don't you think that the, the, this uh, move to, as you've called it, abduct him, would have been quite simpler for them to, you know, end it over there rather than bring him here to actually face the law, uh, so to speak? Because uh, when we're, the other day was, uh, we were speaking with um, the DSS spokesman, and he kept making these uh, claims that people just like to blame them for doing nothing, and they are following the law. So in that respect... They are following the law. Uh, yeah. yeah. We won't say it before me, because know, we lawyers know they are not following the law. They don't mm. respect the law. Mm. We, even in the course of this case, they have flouted a number of orders made by the court. I have more than three uh, committed proceedings in the chain against the head of the SS. It's in court, sir. Mm. So you serve them court order, they will choose the one to pay. Even among the terms, the orders of court, court made, they will choose the one to ban. The one. They will tell they have a protocol, they have a procedure in the office, which is different from what's obtainable in court. They will, they will try to tell you that. They don't, they don't decide it right there from you. Mm. I get him. So they don't respect laws. Uh, we, they can, I, can, I can establish it. I can put, them, I can put it to them. Mm. No, but I'm saying that for the fact that they still so try to... Let yeah. me correct this impression. Yeah. I want you to understand this okay. and take it seriously from me. All right. The game plan was to kill Nam mm. in Kenya. That was the game plan. The game plan, because we had it all. We have the information about all that had transpired in Kenya. But it no. has changed now. No, let me tell you. That was even no, let me tell you. You were talking about arresting him and killing him. I told you their plan was to kill him over there. But what saved the name the Kano was when he was abducted in Nairobi Airport on that day, 16th of, um, that was uh, 19th of uh, June, mm. precisely, 2021. He raised alarm. So the alarm he raised attracted people who know him. I would mean. Yeah. So now that puts those people that abducted him on check. Because mm. if anything has happened to him, those people that saw, at the, saw him at the point he was abducted and molested, we tell the world what happened. Mm. So they were simply they would have simply eliminated him from in Kenya. When but at that time, did those people know that this was uh, sure that he was or? no? They, what happened that when he was raised alarm? When he raised alarm at the point he was abducted, he was alone. Mm. He was shouting, "I'm not the Kano." So people were coming. Then those that abducted him said, no, he's a terrorist. Mm. I get to me. Mm. So the people who, are, who abducted him there, we are shouting, he's a terrorist. He was also shouting, I'm not the camera. So people were coming. So that drama alone has given out information to the public that this guy has been arrested in Kenya, has been abducted in Kenya. I know what it means. Mm. It just isn't. So on account of that development, they, 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 they became changing plans. Was if he was silently abducted without being noticed, we wouldn't be talking about him again. It's just God has saved him. So when I hear them, when I listen to them talk about that they, are, they arrested him, they have killed him, where they arrested him, these things are stupid. Because they know that if anything has happened to him mm. during the period he was abducted, even in Kenya, the Kenya government will be in trouble. Because he raised the alarm in the airport, shouting on top of his voice that he's, I'm not the kind of... I don't know what's happened to me. Who are these people? People are coming. I'll have those informations. We'll have the CCTV footage of what happened in Kenya today. Mm. We'll have them. So at that point, it became difficult for them to execute their plans. So are you aware that he was subjected to all forms of inhuman treatment? He was even injected at some point in Kenya. He was maltreated, beaten, handcuffed, left cuffed. cuffed Taken to an unconventional place, other than police custody, for eight days in Kenya, before he was uh, transferred to Nigerian security agents. So we have the footage of all that transpired in the airport, and it's before the court now in Kenya. So that was what saved him. So when they talk about sparing his life, then forget about it. It's just a man, it's because they have nothing to add to it again. Because the, God saved him. Let me just put it this way. God saved him. All right. Well, based on the um, amended charges uh, mm. you've been mentioning, mm. 
don't you think there's so much, what I call it, evidence out there against your client? I mean, we have uh, videos of him saying... No, forget uh, about it. You see, you're not a lawyer. I'm not, I'm not competent to discuss this. Let me say this to you. They don't want us to go into the video or whatever. Mm -hmm. Because have the laws guiding what you're discussing now. Yeah. We we'll have the laws guiding the administrative piece of evidence in court. All right. We we'll have the law guiding commission of offenses. We we'll have the law guiding uh, utterances, oh. mere word of mouth. So I wouldn't want to go into the uh, the, the the merit or otherwise of the charge. But don't, what don't, don't you think the federal government will be presenting some of these things? As no, but what I'm saying, those things does not disclose any offense in our law. And that's why I can teach you that for you to understand. Because I don't know why. Unless you go to solar school and come back, they will oh. come for lecture. <laughs> right. So, and I wouldn't want to delve into the substance of that aspect because right. we have dealt with it in our objection. Oh. If you look, if you have access to our objection on filing, because it's in public, you go through our objection and see what you said about those things. Oh. So, and. Those amended charges have not disclosed the offense, not to law he committed. So that's simple. They have it. They know. Mm. They know. They responded with final reply on law. They have it. But don't you so, think they are very confident of whatever they, they are not have? They can't even. Why? Why? why are they, what are they doing in court? Why is that they've not said the date for the for hearing of the application? Mm. Are, are you with me? Yeah. If if there's any offense he committed, I mean, God, we have had that thing yesterday, or even at last at last adjourned date, and rule on it. Even you, a layman, if you go through what they file, and also our objection to the charge and reply on point of law and counter belief, you know they have nothing to they have nothing to offer. Hmm. They have nothing to offer. Even a, 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 a way better preacher who is in the market there will tell you after looking at that uh, uh, paper. Yeah. Hmm. So uh, they they forget about video. Somebody merely expressing his opinions over the uh, through the air uh, or whatever. Because so it doesn't constitute an offence under our law. An offense. Somebody, when you speak, when you speak in a. Right, so when he says things when like you, when you sneeze, Nigeria when you sneeze, down, when you sneeze in a United Kingdom, it will constitute an offense in Nigerian law, in Nigerian court. It's not an offense. Hmm. So I wouldn't want to go there. But let's talk something other than what is uh, sometimes or what before the court. All right, let's talk um, about um, Inam the county himself. Mm -hmm. I I knew there were some um, back and forth about the, your access to him. Uh, it was limited or thereabouts. But the times that you've actually been with him. How is um, how is he? Is he are his spirits undeterred? Uh, mm -hmm. You know the treatment you allege that he's receiving from the DSS. Is it affecting him? Is it is he remorseful in a manner of speaking, or is he still the inner mechanic that we've uh, seen or we've been seeing uh, on the media and everywhere else? I believe what I've seen him in court twice or probably three yes. times and so since he was um, abducted and brought here. So many can is uh, I've constantly maintained in my object to the public. Mm. Yeah, has been in a firm spirit. Mm. So I was, you see, if it's somebody who should be demoralized or deterred in any form, should be somebody who committed an offense. Mm. If you arrest somebody who has not committed an offense, how can you be deterred? He's strong in spirit, firm in conv his convictions. Mm. As, as I speak today, I was with yesterday after the proceedings in court. Mm. So I know, of course, you know, he was um, inflicted with severe injuries and uh, stay under the pens of what happened to him. Kenya have been treated here. So, um, and also, also, part of the other court medicine was that you should have access to his independent medical expert. I'll come mm. and uh, give attention. So, these are part of the other court medicine. Because once some, an independent medical expert now, uh, so that will give, my, give him treatment, because don't trust in what, uh, what, we no longer have confidence in what is being in the medical, uh, medical facility in the SSS. So, I've got down trial and error so far. Mm -hmm. So, once yeah. somebody who is well grounded to come and examine him and also give him treatment. So that was part of the court made yesterday. And I believe most strong, I believe hope so that there will be disorder. Mm. Be disorder because um, these people, I don't trust them in any mm. manner. They are good in, they have their own laws in that place. They have their own laws. Mm. Uh, so they abide by their own laws. So, and they will tell you that uh, they, they, these are procedures for them to do these things. And so let me see what happened between them, probably within the week. Because right. uh, if they flout the other, we'll go back to court. All right, so uh, mm -hmm. we're almost um, rounding up now. But let's uh, move away a little bit from the what's going on at the moment. Mm -hmm. There have been attempts or moves by Igbo elders, Igbo groups, to find what they call a political solution. Mm -hmm. As a legal practitioner, what's your say on this? Do you think it's, it's even worth any merit for someone to say, OK, let's, let's go through this and say, uh, let's put things aside. Forget about the trial or the road to trial and just mm -hmm. let uh, sleeping dogs lie and let's make peace, or so to speak. As a legal practitioner, what, mm -hmm. what do you think about this uh, alternate route that 
some Igbo elders are taking. Okay, settlement out of court or resolution of matters out of court mm. is a procedure sanctioned under our rules of court. Mm. Uh, so, uh, obviously, me and you yes. are aware that what Nana cannot is facing today in court is a political trial. Mm. It's not a conventional trial because it has not committed an offense. If Igbo elders are of the firm view that they should explore political solution to resolving a political trial, then it's allowed. Mm. I encourage them to do that. Uh, because uh, he's not facing a trial. And because they know he has not committed offense, otherwise they will open up the case for him. But of course, they're they, 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 they exploring political solution to situations we found ourselves today in court. I don't it's some it's a work on development. So all right. Uh, um, one more thing, um, you, you said you, you were with him just yesterday. But we also know um, uh, Senator um, Oji Kalu mm -hmm. was also visited him recently. And uh, I think you were not quite OK with that mm -hmm. um, arrangement. What exactly are your objections to others having access to him? You, you know, when somebody, uh, when somebody in, the, in the class of Fundam mm -hmm. uh is in a problem or a situation we are discussing now. Mm. Uh, some political jobbers mm. we like to through that process advance their political interests. Mm. Uh, so uh, what Ojuzo Kano is in substance doing is to advance his political interests. It's not, it wasn't genuine in his visit to Namdi Kano mm. at all. And so and I condemn it. Mm. Uh, so I will issue a statement a couple of hours coming to discuss further on his mission to DSS and um, what he did there when he went to see Namdekan. Mm. Uh, so because um, the, 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 the court made a guideline for, and protocol for visitation. Yes. So anybody who is going to visit in Namdekan must at all times go along with his wife, at least one. So though the court expanded persons visiting him to be three persons, mm. but one of them must be a lawyer to be present at the point of visit. <clears throat> Now, we've been doing this for the past few months with DSS. A, fresh, a person who hasn't come to visit in Namikano before, once you arrive VSS, first of all, we notify the DSS in advance, as Mr. XYZ is coming to visit him along with XYZ person. Formally notify them in writing. This the, the text and guideline courts gave us. So upon arrival, they first of all notify the people who are in charge of the matter about our presence and about the presence of a new person who's coming to visit him. Mm. If the new person who is coming to visit him is cleared by the people who are receiving us, yes. then he will be asked to pass through a procedure. They will take his pictures, take other things they usually do there, then before they will allow us in. This has been extant mm. from time ago. Even the brothers passed through this process. The wife, I mean, the wife is biological wife, mm. who came from all the way from UK to see him, passed through this process. So now, and all visited him and left. Mm. So, on the day scheduled for all the other the candles visit, we only called in the morning. That was on today's Thursday, right? Yeah. It's on Friday. That was on Monday this week. So we only called in the morning to be notified by one of the Namikano's siblings that all the candles made a contact with them. And he wants to see him. Mm. And I expressed concern that the notice was impromptu because we expected to furnish DSS, the particulars of people visiting, at least for eight hours before the visit. That has been, the, to be fair with them, that has been the procedure yeah. to enable them to go do other things they want to do with them or probably provide the person and whatnot. So, mm. but notice was impromptu. I was like, I don't think they will allow him because he's just coming, uh, being notified, or being, we've been. Is then being some light to them, to supply to them this morning. Then I said, okay, we, we have to amend our list to include his name, his name that morning. He went there that morning with um, the message of um, one of our lawyers, and also Chim Mumete is my head of, the, our head of chambers that, that day. And visit time, as clearly stated in the court time, court's order, is from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Mm. Though it can be altered at discussion of the SSS, subject to their 
schedule when we we'll come. Yeah. That times will come, they will, they will, they will be of the protocol, they waste time till 3 o'clock to see him. We can, now, can still stay there till 5 o'clock or 5 o'clock, as case may be. Yeah. So, but in any event, you will not go in there before 2. Yeah. You will not go in there before 2 to see him. So, upon the arrival, before 2 p.m., they, they, they waited for us to come to see him. Then they went in. They were allowed to go in. I mean, they make a job for and HRT. They were allowed to come in. Only for them to, to be told upon arrival to visit them. Because all these kind of came and visited and left. Hmm. Now, these are questions begging for answer. Who authorized all these visit? In violation of the court guideline, who authorized it? DSS. Has it happened before? No. Now, the worst part is that DSS officials who conducted that visit told him the camp that somebody, very important person, was there to see him hmm. without mentioning his name to Namde. And now they queried, where is it? Is the foreigner of my lawyers? Are they around? Say no, that if somebody very important came to They didn't mention all those kind of names to Namde camp before Namde went there. And secondly, the place of visit, if it was conducted, was not a convenient place, was not a conventional place we usually conduct visit. So the man came there, conducted a visit in a separate office where people were present mm. and made uh, some terrible comments, which I may not like to mention here, but I will, it will contain in my right of. You, you can go ahead and right? mention So this. assuming somebody mm. went to visit in Dam mm. and they authorized, first of all, they authorized him to go against the guideline. Mm. Two, they allowed him to come to conduct the visit in an office, or under, we are under the conventional place we usually visit him. Three, he came in there without mentioning his name to Nam, that is what one coming to see him. Mm. Because usually, we are, Nam usually informed us, and we have discussed about a person who's coming to see him at next, at next date, mm. without mentioning his name. The only for Nam, for my client, Nam began to come to the, to the office. I, won't, I don't want to mention the office. I saw people there, but she wasn't there alone. Hmm. There are some people who are there, about five, four different persons, or three different persons, observing what you told him. He went there to tell them. Why did you run away from your house in, in 2017? Hmm. During the time your house was vetted by the claim by the Nigerian soldiers. Why did you, we have stayed back and nothing will happen for you? Happened to you. So ordinary, it as it wasn't it can be it can be interpreted. At best, that he wasn't even happy that Nandi Khan is alive today. If somebody who passed through this process, you were in your house, somebody came, some people came very your premises and killed people in their numbers. Then, ordinarily, they came for you. They came for you and killed people in their numbers. You know, those people were ordinarily killed if they have seen you. But God saved you. And someone came to see you just a few days ago. To ask you what, why didn't you stay back? Are you, have you, are you seeing the intent? Do you understand the motive now? Mm. And proceeded to discredit the effort being made by great Igbo, respected Igbo elders to negotiate, to discuss with federal government on possible, on possible political solution to the matter. And nothing more left. What what do I response do you think he was expecting from uh, Namdi Kano? What do you, what are you expecting to respond? Nani told you, how can he stay? How can he stay? Some people some people came to his house to kill him. And kill to an eight person, living up there, living human beings, not animals. In the process, they have killed him. So you can now see there is more to eat than me the eyes. So I will make it public today and I'll ask demand an explanation from Matthew Kano to tell us why. He went to ask Nam the kind of work like those questions. He's, he was very there to advance his political interests, if I can say. Yeah. He wasn't there in real sense of it to see Nam the to discuss something genuine with him. People have been seeing him. Our respected Ibo leaders went to see him. Yeah. And the, the, meet, the, the visit was authorized in line with the guideline. When I mean respected, I mean respected Ibo leaders. They had discussions with him. The visit was also conducted in the conventional place where we just sit and discuss with him. Oh. Did nobody comment? Did nobody complain? 
These are genuine people who have good intentions. So I, I may not wish to comment for that because I'm going to deal with this issue in my write-up in the next couple of hours. I'll address him properly. I'll speak to him in a language you understand. I'll bring him, I'll address him properly. All right. Uh, thank All you. right, now, uh, finally, um, just um, uh, to round up, is there anything you actually want to say about the whole process that uh, perhaps has not come up yet, something you want to get off your chest? And also, uh, what are you, what's your, uh, your conviction about how this is going to turn out? No, I know that it will be... Nandi can will be released unconditionally. Oh. There's no two ways about it. If he isn't? I'm just telling you he will release unconditionally. That's what happened. Oh. Because he has committed an offense unto law. We don't watch something in this country. We don't watch happening in the Northern States. We don't people have been committing an offense. We know what's playing out there. We have all the, all the information with us. But you know, there's an interview of yours where you say you're not sure if you'll get a fair trial. Do you still stand No, there will not try in the first place. There will not try her. Oh, all so right. Yeah, I can't. The entire will not go on. Oh. I can assure you, I will not try her. I will not try If they refuse, I don't want to go into details of what's our strategy, but I will not try her. All right. I cannot, you can't subject an innocent person to try her. That's settled. It can't be tried. It can't be it must be released unconditionally. So they can probably explore that process through, which are, through resolving whatever they are talking about. But I don't want to answer concern. He hasn't committed an offense as long. To, deserving of him facing a trial, any form of trial. And also, the offense is being charged. Mm -hmm. The charge filed against him, it's not because of any offense. I will, I will oblige you a copy of what you file objection to the charge before you leave. Right. So when you go home, you say, you have to open a file. As people, when you come back, you read one page. Tomorrow, another page, <laughs> you read page by page. Mm. Before you conclude within the week, you understand yeah. what you're talking about. It's just, we, we, it was kind of written in a long language. It's just, I don't think it's too cumbersome for you not to understand, or legalistic for you not to understand. Mm. Thank you so much. All right, uh, Mr. Ifan Yerichofo, thanks mm. very much for coming on Top Talk and for uh, shedding more light on this matter. Thank you so much. Okay. God bless you.